Hi there, Dolly friends. I am so happy that you're here today because I don't know what the heck I'm doing and I need my friends around me <laughs> to let me know what it is I'm doing. I saw this cool tree today while I was out walking and I got the notion that I wanted to make some plants. Now, I don't do anything with real plants, so I don't know what Except makes me think them. I can make a miniature plant. Uh, to help me along, I picked up some leaves and I'm just washing them off. And I want to try to make some ferns. Uh, there's just something about ferns and I think I want to have some in my doll's house. I watched a few videos. They were all similar in their approach. So I just, you, you, you what you need is some paper. Any kind of paper will do. I'm using construction paper. It needs to be colored on both sides. If you just have white paper, you could use a crayon or ink pens to color it. You could use crepe paper, magazine paper. Um, you'll also need some wire. I'm going to use some thin floral wire but you could use some twist tie wire or any really jewelry wire, any thin wire that you have. It's not really going to show. Um, and some glue and some scissors, of course. So I just folded it in half and I cut a basic leaf shape. Um, and then I'm slant angling my cuts downward. That's going to be the base of my blade or frond. And then I'm just cutting little triangles into the area there. Now, the first ones I did came out a little squared on the end because I was going really fast. You want to use the sharpest and smallest scissors that you have, but it could be done with really any scissors that you have if you're careful. Um, and just be careful that you don't cut through your fold. Or crepe paper would be really fun to use or even fabric, a magazine, something from a magazine that has colors on both sides. And I'm using green because that's the traditional color of ferns, <laughs> but you could really use any color. Um, this would be a really fun project to do if you have children. You could make large ones and let them cut them out with little scissors. I think this would be a really fun project to do with kids. <clears throat> um, yeah, so you open it out and you see it looks like a plant. And so I'm just gonna do a few more here and show you what I'm doing. And I'll show you some cool pictures of ferns while I do that. Some things I learned about ferns going online are that they are prehistoric plants and they do not reproduce by seeds like we typically think that you just plant a seed and grow whatever it is you're trying to grow. They grow by spores, which you sometimes see on the back of their leaves as little brown dots and they blow off and they root themselves into the upper soil. The roots don't even go far down like we typically think of plants. And there's other types of ferns that grow by walking themselves along in on the forest bed. Please forgive me if you are a botanist or a plant biologist because I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Anyway, I'm bending the leaves over by using my ball stylus, just pulling them down a little bit. You could just bend them back with your fingers or you could use the end of a round pin to do the same thing. I'm just trying different things. It really didn't make too much of a difference in the end. And then I'm cutting some strips out of the same construction paper and I'm going to use that to attach my wire. I tried just putting glue on the little strip and gluing it down, but I found it worked better if I put it right on the leaf itself. And I'm just using this white glue. You really could probably use any kind of glue that you have. And I have this very thin floral wire, but you could use any kind of thin wire that's appropriate for the paper that you're using. And you could even pull the paper off a twist tie wire and, and use that.
I did a bunch of those and let them dry. And then I was trying to think of ways that I could add a little more detail. Um, so this part of the fern would be called a blade. And if you include the whole stem and the roots and everything, it's called the frond. And then each little triangle that I'm cutting out is called a pinna. Sometimes on the pinna, you can see other little divisions that are called pinules. So I wanted to try to give a little bit of the effect of the pinule. So I'm just taking some little snips on the bottom of the leaves here. But I thought it would give it a little more dimension. Um, I don't think ultimately you can even really tell when you put them all together. Maybe if you did them all that way or you used a different type of paper, um, it might be more effective. So to do the other side, I just flipped it over and did it from the back. And this one I thought I would try to get both sides at once by clipping it while it's folded in half. It was a little more challenging, but it gets the job done. I only did a few that way because I didn't think it was really very noticeable. And I'm just using my ball stylus to accentuate the wire that's in there to make it seem more like a stem. You could use your fingernail to do this. You don't need to have a ball stylus. But you see how this is a really versatile type of project. And then you just can bend the wires to make them look how you want. And I was just putting them in this little piece of foam here to get an idea how they might look. You can see the first ones I did have a little more square. So I took out my leaves and I really, my plan is to cut them the same way I cut the construction paper, but I really let them dry too much. I actually let them dry overnight. Um, and they were a little bit too brittle. I had read online that you could dip them in wax to preserve them, and I do end up doing this, but you'll see in the end, I cut this leaf already. You'll see in the end that it was a, not a very good idea. So this is what I did. I just, just like my paper, I just folded it in half and shaped the little leaf, and then cut it the same way, cut out my little triangles. If you've seen ferns, you've seen that as the blades begin to grow, they start out from a little coiled end and it's called a fiddlehead. So I was just coiling the end of that. So I have all my leaves done and I've glued some wire just to the ends because the wire doesn't really stick well up the, up the whole middle of the leaf and it's, they're pretty brittle. So I'm really under, so I melted some beeswax and I've really underestimated the amount of wax that's getting on these leaves because of course it just looks like water. So I think, I think if I, well, I probably will do this again because I'm not happy with the way this turns out. And I don't think I would use the wax for this project. If you want to preserve a leaf because you like it and you want to keep its shape and its color, you could try this method, but this didn't really work for what I was doing. But of course, I've never done this before and I have no idea what I'm doing. You can see already on the leaves on the bottom, especially how like wax is clumping, but I didn't notice that. So while I let those dry, I thought I would add a little bit of color to the center of these leaves. There's really, when I look at ferns, there's not a huge amount of variation in color. Um, they're pretty evenly colored, but down the center of the leaf, you can sometimes see, or the blade rather, you can sometimes see it, it's a little bit darker. So I'm just kind of randomly adding some dark color there because I don't want it to look too 
much like I was just drawing a stripe. Um, so it, it didn't really, when it dries, it dries a bit lighter and it's okay. It gives it a little bit more dimension, but you could color them if you want to. And if you don't have paints, you can use any type of paint too. I think watercolors would actually work really well. Um, I just have acrylic paint that I'm really diluting. Um, I have these other colors here, but I just used green and this is how they turned out, but you could even use ink pens or, um, watercolor, like I mentioned, or not do it at all. So here are my waxy leaves and they're very brittle. So yeah, I'm not sure it's going to work out for me. Some of the stems I ended up wrapping with some floral tape to keep the wire on. I just did this on a few of them. It was too bulky and I didn't really like the way it looked. When I try it again with actual leaves, I think I'll just forego the wire. All the handling of the leaves just made them really brittle. And then adding the wax just made it even worse. And then it looks as if the wax would peel right off, but it actually doesn't. It's stuck on there. So I am frantically looking for clay pots, which I was almost sure that I had. But I can't seem to find them. But I have this piece of copper that I salvaged when we were doing some construction. But it's convex on the bottom, and I'm going to have to find a way to stabilize that. Um, that's really all I could find. I have a little basket, a little resin basket that one of my dolly friends gave me, and I'm going to use that also. I really didn't have anything, and I didn't really have time to make anything, but I'm going to have to make this work for this pot. And then I was thinking just to give it a little bit more detail of adding some uh, nail art across the top there. You can see I've added some nail art to my thumb. <laughs> and that's what it turned out after I did it. It's okay. I'm, I'm not that thrilled with it. <laughs> thrilled with it. I'd like to have a clay pot or a planter of some kind. Um, but here's here they are, and I'll show you the little basket I have, and I'm going to use those two to make two fern plants. Here's the little resin basket. So I'm using this technique, which you've seen other miniaturists use to create little house plants. I'm just putting in some air dry clay, and I just watched my friend Lisa on Miniature Things by Lisa do this exact thing. So I'm just copying exactly what she did. I'll link her video above if you haven't seen it. She is a great miniaturist and has wonderful ideas, which I steal all the time. So I'm just adding some glue on top of that. And then I'm going to use tea for my dirt, which a lot of people use. I've never made a plant, so I've barely even potted a real plant. So that's how unsavvy I am. Um, yeah, I'm going to do my paper ones first because they're a little bit more resilient. I should have paid more attention to the sizing <laughs> of my leaves. I should have tried to have more, a little more uniformity in their size, um, but I didn't. So I'm just winging it here. <laughs> it, it looks like a plant, right? <laughs> Well, that's about all I could do for that one and let's see what I can do with my leaves I found on the ground <laughs> and cut into ferns I did try peeling off some of that cracking wax, but it just, it's just stuck there. <laughs> it won't come off. Um, yeah, I, I, I will not do it this way again, and I will probably 
dig this out of here somehow and redo it because I do like using the leaves that I found outside but dipping them in wax was a bad idea and trying to add the wire was a bad idea. Um, yeah, I think I'll just leave them as they are and try to shape them a little bit while they're wet or just after I cut them and then I'll just spray them with some sort of sealer and see what happens. Cause this, yeah, I would think how nice it would look if it didn't have those clumps of white wax. I think if I tried to even like use a match or melt it a little bit to get it off, I think I would probably catch it on fire. I went ahead and set it in the doll's house as if that was going to improve anything, <laughs> but it really didn't. Um, yeah, I think next time, well, I'm definitely going to redo it, but I will not be using the wax next time. And here's the fern. It also needs more fronds or more something. I put it in the dormitory and I do kind of like it in there with the butterflies. So it didn't quite meet my ideal of the prehistoric ferns I had in my mind, but I'll have to work on it some more. Let me know if you make something like this and please come back and visit me next time in the doll cupboard.